Check. Hey, check. Check. Hey, check. There's a light on in your attic. I can see it. And it flashes for a dirty voyeur like me. Check. There's a heartbeat on the air tonight, I hear it. Check. Whispering beep, 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 beep. Check. We're at Sonic Lounge Studios in Grove City. Um, and it's just kind of my, it's become my second home sort of at this point. I've made two records and an EP here. I've worked with Joe Veers. He actually even recorded Carson Grew. We've known him for a really long time. We sort of have evolved together in a way, just because we have we work so well together and and he's, you know, always working on his craft and I'm always working on mine. So I feel like every time we do something it kinda gets better and better. He just makes me feel so comfortable, but also offers like criticism without necessarily making me feel, you know, embarrassed and terrified and shitty. So basically we'll we'll hammer out the live tracks and try to get them to sound like just as energetic as possible. Just make sure the vibe of it is good and then we overdub guitars and vocals for, you know, three or four days. Oh, that's um, fucking awesome. But really the goal is usually to make everything sound as as rock and roll and live as possible. Cause I just feel like and this is just a personal decision. A lot of people disagree with this, but I feel like playing something over and over again just kills the song. I don't like to do things more than five times. I feel like once you've done that, you're you're kind of killing the feel of the entire song. Even if you're gonna go in and overdub the shit out of it, it's just important to have the live rough trap be something that sounds like people have played it, <laughs> preferably. <laughs> wrote, and I don't know if I can say it was inspired by a Lifetime movie, but um, but I was watching a Lifetime movie when I started writing it, and it was, it's longer, the, the one on the new record. There's something inspiring about just really melodramatic, stupid shit to me that makes me want to write a song, so. There's not really that same standard for like indie alt country females who swear a lot, so I don't know when, when the timing will be right for me, or if I need to, you know suck it up and, and stop saying shit in every song and, and that will be my, my big breakout hit. I hate when I get to a show and the poster is like, if you like Kitty Wells, and I'm like, in what fucking way are we gonna play a Kitty Wells show? And then you have some frail person with a walker like walk in and just dies of a heart attack because of the show we just played. Because I think we are somewhat dangerous in a musical sense, but we're not gonna like kill you. But it makes us seem like we are going to kill you when when you go expecting a Loretta Lynn show. I think it's the fact that our reputation is to be somewhat chaotic. It, people try to make it worse than it is, I guess, is the problem. I don't think people like rock and roll. <laughs> I think they claim to, but they don't. I'm picturing like part superhero, part really good songwriter. Maybe with capes involved. 